Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. I'm Amanda from the Holistic Equestrian, and we have the, oh, we're on February now for the monthly guest speaker session, and we have got the amazing, fabulous, my wonderful teacher, Susan Tenney from Elemental Acupressure joining us. Um, and I think um, I'm hoping that this, well, I know, let's just rephrase that. I know that this session um, ties in really nicely with the blog post that I've released this month, which was um, a glimpse into the five elements. We've also started the holistic anatomy series and we've been looking at the fire element. So I showed you a couple of points to do there. And um, I just thought that it would be a really good time to get Susan in. Um, I know that a lot of you have done the horse quiz, which is fantastic. And you've all been putting in the group what element your horse is. Oh Susan, I think it's, yeah, <laughs> there's been quite a few. And we have, um, no surprise, um, a lot of the water element. Um, and I'm sure that Susan will kind of dig around about that a bit more and just um, these, these horses that kind of come to us and, and change things a lot. And then, yeah, we've got the, the earth horses and... Um, a few fires, but not very many metal horses. I haven't seen anybody with a metal horse yet. Um, so um, I will we also are... say that it, it, you're not alone. So, you know, we uh, have the quiz set up so that it tracks how many of each result. Yeah. And we have a full one third of the people who take the quiz end up with water. So it's definitely the highest. And the metal is the lowest. It's got the absolutely. So I don't, I don't know why exactly. Because out in practice, it's it's more evenly distributed. But something yeah. about the type of person that wants to take a quiz, and what the yeah, result maybe. is, it's, it's fascinating. Maybe very very interesting. Um, I'm not sure, Susan. Did you try to share the link and it wouldn't work? Is that what um, we'd kind of see? Yeah, it's not really giving me a window for putting in a. Uh, comment for anything so okay. um yeah I don't know. yeah okay so what we'll do any links and things that susan mentions through the chat i will add to the facebook group so that you yeah. can all access those things that's not a problem at all the quiz link is already in the facebook group i think i've posted about it a couple of times so just scroll down if you're looking for it there will be a post on it and you can find it um you can even do that now while you're listening to us if you're wanting to find out which element your horse it is um, just so that things relate a little bit more to you, um, but we're made up of all the five elements. So yes, it's good to know about all of them. Um, so we're using StreamYard and it comes up as Facebook user rather than your name, which is really irritating. I'm going yeah, to see. Lisa. Yes, so yes, yeah, it says hi from Lisa, so hi Lisa. And um, hello to the other couple of people that have said hello, but I'm really sorry, I don't know who it is and it's not showing up on my Facebook page yet. And I think if I refresh it, refresh it, I think I'm gonna get the sound coming back at me from trying to do the live and have it playing. So I'm not actually going to attempt that. But if you do have any comments throughout the session, pop your comment or your question into the chat um, and we can come back to it. Or if it's the right time, we can go through it there and then. And um, yeah, so today's session really is looking at the five element theory, um, the five elements and our relationship with our horses. Um, but I'm going to hand over to Susan so that she can do um, an introduction properly. Um, and yeah, I know that a lot of you in the group have already kind of signed up and are following Susan already. But for those who don't, I'm going to hand over to Susan. Thank you, Amanda. And first of all, just thanks for having me here. This is always this is my favorite kind of group because I know you guys are just loving all of the same things about caring for our horses and our dogs and our cats and all the other animals in our lives, like bunnies. I know Amanda has bunnies. Mm -hmm. and all um, we all have the, a, a very similar kind of resonance for what we're trying to do with animals. Um, you know, there's a real wide range of what people like to do with animals, um, but what your crew is really drawn to um, no matter what they do, like whether you're, you know, big competition, dressage, agility, you, you know, whatever, you're still wanting that level of connection. You're wanting that level of real respect for the animal 
and really cultivating a relationship that is sacred and powerful. Mm -hmm. And all of that is something, of course, that's very near and dear to my heart and um, something that I see growing and growing. I think it's a really exciting time to be involved with animals around the world because yes, of course, there are places that need improvement. That will probably always be true, but there's also new avenues, new communities and new, um, I would say just a new spirit that is is really growing and um, getting stronger in very wonderful ways. So um, just thank you for, for being a part of that and also for just, um, providing a place that people like us can really feel at home. So thank you, Amanda. Um, all of you should know that um, Amanda is actually one of our students. She is one of the most engaged and like dedicated and focused students, um, but she also brings so much more than just what we're offering. And she already has so much other training and other wisdom and brilliance that it's exciting to see it all blossom. But anyway, um, so I am Susan Tenney. And if you don't know me, if you haven't taken the quiz or seen some of our Facebook posts or whatever, um, I've been doing this work with five element acupressure, um, shiatsu, energetic healing, all that kind of ball of yarn there for 30 years as of this year. So it's kind of an exciting time to think, oh my God, I've been doing this for 30 years and to see what's happened in those 30 years, it's an extraordinary development and growth. And some of the things that we see as fairly kind of common and um, not so surprising, were really, really out there. <laughs> when I got started. So like I said, it's an it's a really exciting time to be involved with horses or any kind of animals. Um, but there's always room for more growth and more ex um, explorations, shall we say. And so my specialty is working with this five element theory that Amanda spoke about. And I have used that with um, very top level elite um, performers like United States Equestrian Team and the Swiss equestrian team um, in, you know, world-class events, FEI, you know, world championships and that kind of thing. And I've used it with, you know, rescue dogs, rescue horses that are at the very other end of the scale and everything in between. And what oh. we love is that this, um, this approach for being with horses, um, of looking through the lens of the five elements that we're gonna foc focus on today oh. is just something so special and wonderful for understanding your animals and really getting a bead on how to give them their best life. Because I think most people, if they get to the stage where all of you are, um, you're passionate about what you do, but you don't always know the right way to go. There's so many ways that you could choose for training or feed or any part of the lifestyle or riding or whatever. Um, and what I love about the five elements is it gives you a structure, it gives you a guide so that you can have a customized plan for how to help your animal thrive. And you can go to the pro level, like what Amanda's working on is to, to be able to help other people's horses, or whether you're working with your own horse, it doesn't really matter. Um, it is all about insight and pattern recognition. And it's... Um, the reason I think we are still working with the five elements, even though they were developed as a system 3,000 years ago uh, in China and other parts of the Orient, the reason we're still using it is it works. So um, I will just kind of say that that is what we work with in a nutshell. Yeah, lovely, perfect. So Susan, can you tell um, everybody a little bit more about what the five element theory is? Um, and how we can actually use that information. Because like you say, it's such an ancient practice that wasn't necessarily set up for using yep. with horses. Not necessarily, no. You know, so how does that transfer over? So when we're trying to, trying to support Absolutely. our Absolutely. So there are stories, and you know, it's all so vague because we're talking about, you know, centuries upon centuries ago mm -hmm. when there are certainly records in their history, but it's, it's not a history like what we have now. Um, and so 
actually some of the earliest uses they you know stories it's it's almost more myth than than history in some ways of using acupuncture is actually from when they say like an arrow in a battle hit the horse in a certain part hit a point and the horse went you know was better because of the arrow is that true kind of hard to know right but wow. it's an interesting <laughs> thought uh, but the but the thought is is that um, what these five elements are, are natural, recognizable, repeatable patterns that happen throughout nature. So they happen in our seasons, they happen in our lives, they happen in our body systems. And by being able to categorize and understand how our, uh, these five aspects of our health and wellness and mind and you know behavior, everything, how these different aspects kind of interact and have this interplay allows us to make choices and create a, a healthier life for ourselves and for our animals. Now, a lot of this was initially used primarily for people, and that continues to be true. I mean, there's acupuncturists and herbalists, et cetera, that are working across the globe and always have been. But um, of course, animals, veterinary acupuncture and veterinary kind of healing arts were have been engaged this whole time because you know if you have an agrarian community that depends on the health of those animals in order to make your crops or you know grow your food or whatever um all of that is going to be prioritized as well so acupuncture and all of these theories have been used with horses um for forever but i think we are taking a, a whole new um, kind of a renewed and modern look at things in the sense that the, what we're using our horses for is a little different than a farmer who's living out in remote aspect of China 3000 years ago. Um, we're using our horses for trail rides or other, you know, it's, it's a modern use, yeah. but the the as the way we use this is is uh, still drawing from the same theory. And in a nutshell, what it basically says is that there are five basic patterns in our health and wellness and how we work throughout. And these five basic patterns are all kind of interacting and interplaying and keeping the whole system going. We have all five of these patterns within us, just as you have a, a heart and a set of lungs and a set of kidneys. Um, it's not that if we, you know, if you go through the quiz and you get that your horse is a wood horse or whatever, you don't only have that one type. You have all of these types that are working. So instead of thinking it of it as an either or, it's much more about um, kind of concentrations in the sense that if you were baking a cake and you could make it with a, a lot of sugar and less flour, or you could make a different kind of cake and make it with more flour and less sugar, and it still makes your cake. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing in our animals. Each one is gonna have different concentrations of all of the five elements. And it's the one that is the predominant, the one that we see the most, that's the most um, it's the easiest to kind of identify and learn from and use those patterns to help our horses. But at the same time, we have to be cognizant that those other four are still acting and still playing their part. Just as let's say you have, you know, lung problems and you're paying attention to your lung problems and taking medication or getting acupuncture, you know, whatever you're doing to help your lungs, but you still have all your other organs. You want to make sure they're healthy as well. So instead, I think the, the image of instead of either or, think of it as a jewel that has different facets and all of the facets are important and make up this beautiful jewel of the horses in our lives. Yeah. And can you tell us a bit about what those five elements are um, sure. and the various qualities within those five elements? Yeah, because each of those five elements um, will be seen in different places. So um, as I go through the types, and I'm, I'll give a brief description, know that, of course, it can get really sophisticated and complicated and detailed and all of that, which is people like Amanda that come and study with me for two to four to, you know, many more years. 
um, you can go down the serious rabbit hole with it. But having that first blush is amazingly informative and helpful and useful. Like you can turn it into practical solutions. So what I love about that is that the um, these, these five patterns that we see, as I describe them, I want you to kind of think of the animals in your life, think of yourself, think of the people in your life, and see if you can't think of an animal or a person that kind of matches the profile that I describe. Because the more that you can kind of give it a, a, a reality in your life, the better it is instead of being some dry, dusty theory, who cares about that? We want something that's alive and um, inhabited or animated. So the first type that I tend to talk about is the dynamo type. Um, and if you go through the quiz and you know I've given these names to them to try to kind of capture the essence of these types. Um, and so the first one would be the dynamo type. And the dynamo type is associated with what we call the wood element. And it has the nature of spring. You know how like when it's spring, and you have the ground is there and all the snow, if you're in a snowy place, has melted away. And you know it's really spring when things just start to come up and they push their way to the surface. So there's a sense of kind of explosive growth. There's a little bit of force, a little bit of pressure there. Um, and what we see in these types, these are the horses, for example, that um, always want to go, always want to do, always want to like frolic and, and be active and moving. And so one of their biggest motivating factors is making sure that they don't feel confined. They feel like they can have free movement. And so these are the horses that, you know, you want to go on a ride, you, uh, you, you, you tack them up, you're you're ready to go, but you took 45 minutes to groom them, to get their feet done, to get your tack just right, because you're very persnickety in your own way and you, you wanna do things just so. They're like a bomb ready to explode. They're like, let me go, or you know whatever it is for, they just like that sense of movement. Now they'll do much better after the movement because they've gotten their steam out. They've got to get what they truly need, which is movement and action and that feeling of the blood coursing through their veins. That's what makes them feel better. And so if we want to think of a, a real stereotype of this, you can think of a racehorse um, who's like exploding from the gate and going forward and, you know, coursing down the racetrack. But of course, racetracks aren't maybe our favorite sport to think about. So you can also think of it just in terms of a natural wild horse that really needs to move. And that just that just it has that total pleasure and passion about being able to move in their body, move well, move fast, and just have that glory of what they feel when they move. So if you've ever watched that movie, um, The Black Stallion, so I'm dating myself now, the movie's probably probably from the 80s, actually, but it's a wonderful, um, it has this wonderful scene about this boy that gets shipwrecked on a Greek island with his this black stallion, you know? And there's these parts where he gets on the horse after they kind of tames him, blah, blah, blah. And it's magnificent if you haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. And they go galloping down, you know, the beach. Just the expression of the beauty of movement and power and essence. And it's, it's just electrifying. And that is that wood energy. So that can be beautiful and wonderful as an energy that is uh, allowing them to feel so alive. But there's a dark side too. And all of these, you know, there's no single element that is like perfectly perfect and has, you know, only the light side. They all have their dark sides too. And the dark side of this animal is when they're contained, when they're feeling impatient, when they are, you know, not able to kind of go forward or they're kind of um, they're receiving boundaries that they feel are not correct for one reason or another they'll be very clear 
about their displeasure. So Amanda deals with this a lot. Her mare has a lot of that wood energy. So for those of you that are following her and, and watching all of these um, wonderful videos about Lucy, you can see she has a mind of her own. She's not afraid to show it. And she's very, very present and very clear that this is what she brings to the world and this is how her world, world should be. And so it doesn't matter whether you're riding or you're not riding. It doesn't matter what you're doing with your animals. The whole key to working well with these animals is to be present with them. And I mean, that's going to be true for any animal, right? You Bringing your presence is always a good idea. But with these animals, it's particularly important because they have a very much a, a leadership energy. They want to just bring that sense of leadership and guiding your interaction. And if your head is on your grocery list or the fight that you had with your boyfriend, they'll just say, okay, she's not here. I've got a lead. Whether I want to or not, I've got a lead. So these are animals with when you're present and you're clear and you can say, ah, oh, that's, that's not going to work. We're a team here. And in order for us to work together successfully, we've got to have some ground rules. We've got to have ways that we work together that works for both of us. I'm going to be safe in my space. You've got to be safe in yours, whatever, you know, whatever ground rules you need to have. These are the kinds of places where the wood element, when they are presented with you, with your full presence, they relax because they know that they don't have to do it all and that you're going to be there for them to interact in a way that is clear and present and it is wonderful to see that that kind of relaxation that happens when you are able to be present for them and be the kind of leader i mean we all need to be led by our horses just as much as we lead by them but they live in our world in the end and so there are certain places where they have to let us lead and um, they're happy to do that. Even the wood types are happy to do that when it's done through presence. And this is the key. That's the whole like magical key that will open up everything in dealing with the wood horse. And you can see that in Amanda, for example, as she's dealing with Lucy. Um, she's, you know, she's not off thinking about something. I'm sure she is sometimes. But when it's working, when you're having your good days, um, you're present. You're checking in with her. What do you need? What do I need? What do we need to do together? And how can we move forward? Whether it's, you know, learning how to go on the float or, um, you know, dealing with that mare that you're having a struggle with. Whatever. And so yeah. that is just a couple of tips and ideas about how the wood element works. And that's, again, that's that dynamo because they have this big dynamic energy and it's wonderful to be around. Very inspiring. It'll just oh, take your breath away when you see them doing what they do. But the next one, although they have as much energy and they can be just as kind of electric, it has a really different feel to it. And that element is named after the element of fire. So again, these are elemental forces. So you can kind of use you can think about fire and how fire acts in the world and understand the qualities as well. So whereas the wood has this like, think of a bamboo forest, you know, it pushes its way up and it grows and expands. Well, fire is expansive as well, but in a different way. It's showier, it's sparklier. And so it uh, the, the animals that have this fire energy can be just as active, just as athletic, um, just as much wanting that movement, but it's a different quality. They tend to be showier. They tend to be more drama driven. Um, and they're also, instead of being driven primarily through the need to move and perform and to do, and that's how you're going to connect to those wood horses is by doing things together. You're going to instead connect to them primarily through relationship. And these are horses because they have a lot of energy. They will often you know, do all sorts of things with you, but they they want to do them because they care about you. They connected with you and they like the stimulation and the play and the fun. But they also really want to connect either with you or with the other animals in their lives. And that is their guiding force. But just as we needed to bring our real sense of presence to the wood horse, 
for the fire horse, we need to bring our sense of grounding and calm. And yes, that's a sense of presence as well. It's a, kind of a, a flavor of presence, but it is really guided by that sense of you need to be grounded. You need to be centered and stable. And that's how you're going to offer your relationship um, a sense of structure and stability. Because these animals can be flighty. They can be um, easily distractible easily overstimulated, like had their threshold can be crossed pretty fast. And those are those times when you need to have that good eye and observation. Oh, you know, we're going on a trail ride. We're out with four other horses. They're just getting too stimulated. I need to just go off and like sit and do some, some body work or some acupressure points or just sit and hang out for five minutes and let them find themselves so that that overstimulation, that over amp has a chance to kind of come back and settle in. And so really the, the thing that we bring to these relationships is close connection because relationships are huge to the fire animals. These are what we call our shining stars. So they're very sparkly and fun to be with. But that sparkly fun to be with can be, you know, the fire in the fireplace or it can be the fire that burns your house down. And we want to make sure that it's it's contained and it's calm and it's warm and it's radiant instead of something out of control, drama queen, diva, that's no fun to be around. And so you can kind of think of, again, I'm using breed stereotypes. And of course, there are, you know, all the elements will be seen in each of these breeds. But um, if you kind of want to have a stereotype, that thoroughbred is a really good wood stereotype, whereas the Arab is a really good stereotype for your fire, kind of flashy and flare and the, the hair and the tail and the air and all of that. Um, but again, the more stable, settled and calm and balanced you can get that fire animal, the better the two of you are gonna do. And they're often needing to ground through you and your actions. Um, so it's up to you, that's your job, is to stay as grounded as you can. Oh, goodness. So I have, let me turn that off. Sorry about that, guys. Ah. Come on, phone. No. I'm going to just make this silent so I don't cut. There we go. Um, but that's the fire. So as we kind of come around, I should have started it out. They have this diagram that we use for the elements. And we have the, the wood type, which was our first one here. And then it kind of raises up to the fire, which is kind of at the top. It's, you know, fire kind of rises up. It's got all this energy and sparkle and flare. Now we're coming around to the earth element. And this is our good as gold uh, horse. And this, now we're really shifting gears because the first two are quite extroverted and active, whereas the earth element is more stable, more quiet, more steady, steady eddy. Um, you're thinking of a horse that is motivated not by movement, not by play they're, or stimulation. They are motivated by comfort. And part of that comfort very, very often has to do with food. <laughs> and so these are the roly poly ponies with a just easygoing attitude. Now I know not all ponies have an easygoing attitude. I'm talking about the ones that do. And um, so these are, if you're again, if you're looking for breeds, you're looking for a rounder breed, maybe like a, a Morgan or a, even a cold blooded horse that is um, gaining weight a little bit easier. A Frisian would be perfect. Somebody just put Frisian. Absolutely. Although the Frisian, I would say, often has that tendency to be quite dramatic. They can be very shining star. A lot of the Frisians that I've worked on over time have been shining stars, but their body build is certainly a colder breed. I mean, they were cart horses to start. And um, so, yeah, they've got more of that earth in there than some lean, um, muscly, but lean muscle type um, thoroughbred. Um, here in the States, since I'm in the States, I, I'll refer to the quarter horse. The quarter horse is a perfect example of an earth type. Um, and, you know, they're just kind of chunky and you, you, they're really good, sturdy, 
hard working horses that you can use for kind of doing hard work. Um, but they, you know, they have a different temperament and a different set of needs than say the Arab. And so the, the earthy types, their whole thing is about comfort and ease and making sure that you're going slow for them. They actually, their brain works a little bit slower, but I think we tend to mistake that for them being a little stupider. So not true. These are very smart, very capable animals that are willing to be, you know, your perfect, perfect horse for learning to ride or being gentle and kind when you're taking a, a six-year-old out on a trail ride. That's who you want. You want the earth horse. You want the good as gold because they are worth their weight in gold. Um, and these horses, I think the big thing that we have to remember with them is keep things bite-sized. If we try to teach them too fast, if we try to like flood them with information, not so helpful because they process information a little bit slower, but that doesn't mean that in a year they can't learn just as much as the fire or wood type. They're just gonna learn it in bite-sized pieces. Easy peasy, no stress. And then when they get to the end of the year, they're able to hold on to what they've learned. Whereas a lot of times, for example, those fire types, they need a lot of repetition because they kind of learned it and then they scattered off to do something else. And, oh, I forgot about all that. So in the end, they're, they're just as solid and just as wonderful to work. I think um, just to add there, Susan, and it's probably going a little bit off track and might not be make any sense to anybody, but I'm just going back to one of the lectures that um, I've watched recently and, and you were saying about that the learning actually happens within that earth element yes that, that's always that that just kind of yeah that's um something that i'll definitely bear in mind because I, I didn't realize that either yeah yeah i think that was counterintuitive when i first learned it because you think oh you know i, I who's someone who's like really in their head and really um sharp and quick and intelligent and um, precise in their and intellectual in their thinking. And, but the truth is our brain, um, we tend to learn slowly as humans. We, we tend to learn in patterns. We tend to need a certain level of repetition. And we think that, you know, there's very few of us that have, you know, uh, what do you call it? photographic memory. Most of us in order to learn something, think of any physical skill, think of any, you know, you know, math skill, you have to repeat it, you have to go slow, you have to ideally learn in these little bits, and then really master it, and then go on. And that's the way to do stress free learning, because you can be successful at each step, instead of like, oh, my God, she's going to send 10 different things at me today, and I don't know how to handle it. And so those earth types, will let you know because their way of showing you that they're not doing well is they'll either shut down or they'll get really stubborn. And I know it's, you know, people say, oh, don't use the word stubborn because it means we need to listen closer. Yeah, that's true. But it does look like stubbornness. It does look like Mount Everest in a horse form where they're like, I'm not going to do whatever you, I just, I hit my limit and that's it. So the fire, when they hit their limit, might want to escape and the wood might want to attack with a bite or a kick. The earth is just like, make me, you know, it's, it's that level of, I've had it. I'm just going to stop. I like comfort. I like stability. So I'm just going to sit here on the couch and say, no way. I'm not getting up off the couch to move. So it's a different quality. As you move around the circle there, you get these different qualities of how, what kinds of things stress them out and how they will respond under that perceived stress. So as we come around to the next one, it's the metal type, which is the perfect performer. And this, the next two become um, a little more hidden, a little less expected, um, a little less emotional, only in the sense that the emotions can be more within. And so they are more what we would call it yin and yang. They're more yin. They're not as extroverted. They're more introverted, sensitive. And so the metal type 
is we call them the perfect performer. These are animals. Um, if you think of, uh, <clears throat> I like to use um, the Akaltekes if you've ever seen them because they have this incredible metallic sheen to their coat, which is extraordinary. They're very, very lean. They have incredible endurance, very hardy, very tough, tough courses. And they are workers. They have been used for endurance uh, rides. Some They've set like world records on endurance rides and things. So these are horses that are workhorses, but I don't mean that in the sense of a big clunky, like, you know, um, heavy duty workhorse. Um, I mean, in the sense that they value working together and producing your effort together. They don't like to be just left alone. They like to have connection to one or two very special people who they trust and really connect to. And it can be quite intimate, but the rest, they kind of are aloof and they kind of keep more at a distance. Um, and they really like to work hard. So whatever that job is, whether you're riding dressage or you're learning circus tricks, it really doesn't matter. But it is something that you want to give them a job, even if it's just to, to overlook the babies, like as they get retired, they're maybe not so happy about it. So you may see them actually doing better if they can have some of the youngsters to kind of watch over in the herd or whatever their job is. But these are horses that are, they can be demanding um, and, and um, really require you to bring your A game, at least for your level. Um, and they are um, powerful, powerful um, companions if you're in sports, you know, if you're really wanting to ride competitively because they will work really hard. But you do have to watch them because they will often uh, hide their stress internally. So instead of acting out emotionally, like the, the wood is going to say, hey, forget you, you know, I'm going to bite you or kick you because this isn't working for me. The metal type is much more kind of elegant and cool and cold and ice queen. So they're going to turn inward and you have to be a good observer. And so people with these perfect performance sometimes don't recognize what's going on internally. They're not watching for the subtle signs of stress. So what you have to do with these horses, because they're a bit more stoic, is to look for things like um, chronic skin problems, chronic respiratory problems that are telling you that they look fine on the outside, but there's something brewing on the inside where their movement is too stiff, their, your, their mind is stiff, they're not learning as well, they're not performing as well, they, they've lost the spark and they're, they're not as, as happy as they might be. And um, so you have to be a good observer with them because they're quiet, you have to listen. And that requires you to get quiet enough to pay attention. But those are, I think, probably more common than the quiz is showing because mm. I think that they are maybe one of the harder ones to notice unless they're really obvious because it is so internal. But that brings us to our fifth one. And the water horse is really something special. And I know that in your kind of general horse population, you're not going to have as many water animals. Whereas in a more alternative community where people are seeking unusual solutions for unusual situations, that's where you're really going to see a lot of the water horses, which is why a lot of your folks, Amanda, would end up in that category. Because the water animals are unusual. They don't fall into, I, I think the biggest thing is to expect the unexpected, basically. And they're the ones that have the bizarre health history or the the, the bizarre behavioral history. Maybe they have some level of trauma in their life that has brought them to the state that they are in. And um, they're animals that don't fit the usual mold. They will require you to get unusual solutions. And a lot of times when you hear people talk about these animals, A, there'll be an interesting story about how you first came together. Like, 
I went to the I went to the barn to go buy a five year old um, you know event prospect and came home with the thirteen year old broken down horse that nobody can touch because they're a monster. But I had this moment and I knew this horse was for me. And so many people end up with the water horse have these stories, that moment of recognition. And it's special. And these horses are special, but they often can't thrive by following the usual solutions, the usual training solutions or healthcare solutions or feed solutions or riding solutions. For one reason or another, you're gonna have places where that breaks down and these animals are going to really drag you kicking and screaming, or if you embrace it, all the better into new areas of exploration, experimentation, and discovery, both about yourself and them. And we call them the wise mystic because they're unusual. They are something other than your average. Not, not that any of our horses are average, but they're more something else. And um, these are horses that push us and drive us into places that are sometimes very uncomfortable. Um, but they are also tend to be our heart horses, the ones that take us to places where we thrive and grow and learn some really incredible things. Um, they tend to be more intuitive. They tend to show up in our dreams. They tend to, they just give us incredible experiences. So that's kind of the nutshell of this entire theory that, you know, I can talk about for years and what, you know, 20 minutes or something is the first taste. Yes. So you kind of covered it a little bit, I think, in most of them, but is there anything that you would add in terms of what to look for when those elements are out of balance? Yes. So I think when your horse is in balance and everything is Copacetic, everybody, you know, physically healthy and um, emotionally healthy, and life is going good. The elements are less in evidence. They're there, and you can still see them in the behavior, but they're less obvious. And because again, we have all five elements, so they're going to be acting out all five all the time. It's when an animal is under stress that we're going to see it a little more easily because under stress, the weakest link is what's going to be showing its showing itself. So, you know, the earth, the earth horse doesn't mind being not doing work. He doesn't mind being stuck out in the pasture, spend a whole day there. That sounds great for him. Whereas the wood type or, or let's say in even being in a box, I don't really care. They're like, they're, it's okay. I have a little tiny pasture, but it's mine. Whereas the wood type might be like, get me the heck out of here. I need to move. And you didn't ride me for two weeks. And I've been in this little itty bitty box stall and I'm going bonkers. So they'll have different places where they will get triggered into their patterns. And it's then that you start to really see that's where the, the where the things break down. That tends to be the place that needs a little shoring up. And maybe that's a lifestyle change. Maybe that's a training change. Maybe that's a food change. Or maybe it's some acupressure or some other, you know, healing essence or, or something, um, you know, that comes from the healing arts that could come in and make a difference. So I don't know if I've answered the question, actually. <laughs> but feel free to ask more. Um, yeah, I think you mentioned about the wood um, and the aggression. You talked about the earth, the metal you talked about, the skin and immune system. I'm just, I'm just trying to go through if there was anything, the fire being ungrounded. Yeah, I think you've pretty much covered the main things that sometimes crop up when the elements are... Well, what we could mention is that there, just as there are behavioral aspects that help us to identify these five elements, 
And, you know, we use those in the quiz, for example, and you're, I'm asking you what happens when your animal is stressed or, you know, things like that. We can also look at what body systems struggle the most in your animal. And so, for example, there are what we call the correspondences, and this is part of the five element theory um, that can get in the weeds very fast, but there are aspects of the body system and when they start to be kind of challenged, we can say, oh, well, we need to pay a little extra attention to the corresponding element. And there are acupressure points we can do and other lifestyle choices we can make. So for example, for the wood types, that's that dynamo type, we might have issues with what are called the sinews in Chinese medicine, which basically means tendons and ligaments. So if your horse has tendon injury, and that's why they got retired off the track. That's like, oh, okay. So that's associated with the wood. Are there any other things? That, oh, yes. He also has eye issues because there's always one of the senses that's associated with the five elements. And sight and eyes have to do with the wood. So as you go around the circle, there are body systems. And, you know, again, this the, the theory is very broad and very deep. So we could talk about this forever, but some of the things you might look for in, in terms of the wood would be um, muscle tension, uh, eye issues, pole tension, definitely um, kind of neck tension and pole tension, as well as um, issues, um, having to do with the, the tendons and ligaments and hoofs, hoops. The hooves are also um, part of the wood element. So if you fall into just one, maybe you have something going on, maybe you don't. But if you have either a really big chronic problem that you're really struggling to deal with, or whether you have several boxes that you can check off, then you want to take a look at that element and see how can we support it through the acupressure or the herbs or lifestyle or whatever. Whereas the fire, the fire has more to do with circulation, heart issues, although horses don't tend to have as many circulatory issues as say dogs do, um, but also heat regulation, sweating issues or lack of sweating um, and a lot of shoulder issues. The earth type tend to have primarily um, issues in digestion and that can, digestion has fingers in all the pies, but particularly in the earth, especially for horses that are overweight or, you know, look at food and gain weight, but it can also be for the ones that are underweight, but we're looking at issues around laminitis, insulin resistance, uh, Cushing's, all of these kinds of things can, can fall into the earth. But you can also look at issues around um, growths like uh, warts and, and tumors, um, as well as what else do we want to say? That the, the hormonal issues can be there too. Coming around to the, the uh, metal, I mentioned that those horses, they might have things in the skin and they might have things like coughs and respiration issues. Um, and that's how you're gonna tell that they're stressed. And those are some of the big ones, but you can also look at um, immune issues um, that can also be part of the, um, the metal picture or profile. And in the water, what you're looking at is issues with aging, um, skeletal issues like joint problems or problems along the, the spinal cord or the spine itself, the vertebrae in the spine, uh, as well as urinary or reproductive issues. And it can be wider than that, but that's the quick, quick kind of organ systems and seeing, again, if you have just one thing, eh, or if it's just kind of a, an acute thing, okay. But if you have long-term issues and you can check off two or three conditions in one box, then you might want to take a look at that element. So when we come together with our horses, is there a risk of elements clashing with each other? If we're one element and our horse is a different element, is, is that possible? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I think what's interesting about our horse's elemental makeup is it's going to interface with our elemental makeup. We have just the same complicated mess that they do. And so the, the thing, the key to remember with this is that as long as one of you, horse or human, 
is more or less balanced. Like they, you know, they're handling their stuff. Nobody's perfect, but you know, you're handling your side of the relationship. The other one will be fine. So that means if you are completely out to lunch and you're really struggling, but your horse can be stable and kind of be resilient, even though you're not doing well, or the other way around. So your your horse is just a baby and he's just learning and he, he just doesn't, he hasn't learned yet how to manage his energy levels or whatever, but you're stable. You're like, I got this because I've worked with a lot of babies and I'm good at this. I, I can be here for you. As long as one of you is able to do that, you'll be fine. The biggest problem of course comes when both of you are out of balance emotionally, um, and it can get a little interesting, right? And there are some elemental pairs that are more natural. Um, so for example, the, the metal and the wood often do very well together because they understand each other. They kind of, they kind of work well together. Whereas the fire and the metal, the fire is all kind of distractible and drama and whatever. And the metal is kind of calm, cool and collected. And they're like, can she just stop all of that flash stuff? And, so, and the the fire is like, can he just get a little more zhuzh going on? Like, come on, come to life. You're a little too, you know. So what there are some pairings that are more natural or less natural, but that's okay. That's okay. The big thing to do is to recognize what's going on and optimizing what you, what you have and also being able to look through the lens of the other being so that let's say you're really earthy and all you're all about support and not working but your horse is wood and they're all about getting action well you're going to have to say, I really like to have, you know, those rides where we don't really do much and we go really slow and that's really relaxing for me. And that's all I really want on the weekend is to just ride and not, you know, have it be. And they're like, yay, she's finally here. Let's gallop. You know, you're going to have to learn to accommodate each other in the activities that you do, but also in all aspects of what you do together. But if you can take that respect and accommodation just as you would in any relationship then you'll do fine then you'll do fine yeah yeah and that sort of leads into my last question um which is regarding you know how best can we um honor our horses element and make sure that we are providing the best support that we can based on their predominant element well i think the biggest part of this is recognizing that there is a pattern and recognizing once you know that there's a pattern that you can go and learn about, mm -hmm. then it's pretty easy because you understand, oh, that's why they're having this behavior. Or that's why these body systems aren't doing well. Or that's why I tried that, you know, acupressure point that I saw on, you know, some Facebook post didn't do anything for them. Well, it wasn't a good match. And so, just i think the first step is just awareness of who is my horse who really are they they're not a motorcycle that you went to the store and you purchased it and you bring it home and it's supposed to take you for the next 30 miles that's not how it works these are creatures alive organisms and most of the type of people that would follow amanda already know that but to understand that there's a pattern that you can seek out and learn more about allows you to have the framework to start to build that lifestyle and to experiment, experiment and streamline your expo exploration. Because if you can do anything with your horse, oh my God, how do, you, how do you explore through that? But if you know like, oh, it's likely that these are gonna be good choices for my horse. You can narrow your choices and make your exploration a little more streamlined, a little more customized and really speed up. It's like a shortcut that gives you the quick route into success. And that's, I mean, don't we all want that? We all want that. We all want quick successes and, and harmony in the relationships that we have with our horses. So for those, um, for those of the people in the group that have already done the quiz, 
they will have received a email outlining their horse's predominant element, otherwise known as a um, constitution. Um, and from there, I believe they'll get a series of emails for what you've got coming up. Yeah. And for anyone that's not taking the quiz, they can find it on my page and my group and on your page. But can you tell everybody a little bit more about what that's leading into and where people can go next for more information and, and what sure. you offer? So like I said, you know, it can be as simple as just taking the five minute quiz and getting some aha moments about what motivates your animal and how to help them thrive. And if if that's the only step you take, that's still huge. You are still way ahead of most people. And thank you for doing that because there is nothing that I want to bring to horse lovers more than that is that 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 insight, that understanding. But if that's exciting to you and that makes sense to you and you want to go forward or if you get those results and you're like it's just not quite right like i need i need to refine it i need to fine tune it because it mm, i need more um starting next week on wednesday through oh well it's wednesday through sunday if you're in my time zone in the u.s but for australians that is going to be on thursday through monday because you guys are ahead of me um but we are going to have daily um, presentations on different aspects of these five elements and how they show up in training in behavior in relationships and by relationships i mean with humans as well as a lot of what causes stresses for us is the horse relations with other horses like herd dynamics that's you know this is a whole huge thing we can go into um as well as um issues around um aging so if your animal is you know healthy enough and lucky enough to live into old age we want them to to be healthy and happy in that time and each of the elements will age in different ways. So, I, you know, there are ways to, to support that. So those five days, we are having um, about a half an hour um, uh, live presentation and know that, yes, it's true for Western Australia, it's at 3 a.m. And I do apologize for that. Uh, it's terrible, but um, know that all of those sessions are going to be recorded and they will definitely, the replays will absolutely be made available and you'll have those, those will be made available for a full week. So you have plenty of time to catch up. Um, and if you join the event through the links in the quiz or the other emails, those will take you to the, the group um, where all of the materials will be stored and you can go and it's all free. So just come and do it because like, why would free you do that? <laughs> but all of that is leading to, we are starting a new series. Um, each year we start a new group of students that go through the courses and whether you take just one course or whether you go through the entire certification program, um, we do have kind of a sequence of courses that starts um, uh, first week of March. And so we are definitely wanting to welcome a new group and to the courses. Yes. Yes. And I can vouch for saying that it is very addictive. <laughs> it is very, very addictive. And I started just watching just the free things and there was just so much valuable information. And, and I thought, oh, it's free. There can't be much more to learn, but oh my God, that this is <laughs> mind blowing. There is when you think you've got your head around it, there's another bit, there's another bit. And it's just, it's amazing because it fills so many gaps. So for me personally, in my training, I started off doing the photonic light therapy and learning acupoint yeah. that way. And I thought, oh, I've got this, you know, acupoint for this and acupoint for that. And I can, you know, and then it came to the five element theory and went, oh, there's so much missing. There's so much more that I can be doing here than... You know, obviously I do use the, the red light stuff, but it's very focused on specific things, whereas this is wide ranging. It covers anything and everything, What you know, like Susan says, relationships, training, feed, health, everything. It's mind blowing. So I really, 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 really encourage you to sign up for these um, sessions that Susan's got coming up and maybe then look at some of the, um, you've got the smaller, shorter um, uh, courses. 
and then yeah see where it takes you because it's once you start i, I promise you it's, you can't, you can't stop. <laughs> you got hooked girl you got hooked yeah it happens it happens but the other thing that i love is um in 2019 the last time um i was in europe teaching um a student came up to us um who had taken a class literally 20 years earlier and i hadn't seen her in that whole time and she had said that she had used the information from that one one day class it was an in-person class but we have the same stuff online now and um she was still using it 20 years later and she was using it at least once a week and it was just so exciting to me to realize that yes these little pieces can become part of how you are a horsewoman and it is it's powerful um it becomes as common as you know hoof cleaning but it is um, able to give you skills and tasks that really help you be a part of that whole circle of care um, that we so want to give our animals and horses, you know, is our focus today, but for any animal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think, um, yeah, there's, there's so many things that again have filled gaps for my relationship with Lucy and, and as Susan mentioned earlier on that she has this, this wood element and she's got a lot of wood in her and that's, that's her mask. And, um, unfortunately, you know, it does come out as aggression when she's not happy. Um, but she's also the, the predominant one is, is this water horse that she's just taken me on this journey and it can feel quite lonely. And I know a lot of people in the group have come up with the water horses. Um, you can feel like you're completely losing your mind, especially yep. when you, you're surrounded by more traditional horse people um, and you're going on about certain things that they're just going, it's a horse and you're going, it's not a horse. And this keeps happening and that keeps happening. And you just find that these horses change your lives and this five element theory and elemental acupressure just provides you with you know we call ourselves the Accu sisters because it's a group and it's a family and you know Susan's our matriarch at the top and <laughs> <laughs> just pushing a bit yeah. here. It, is, it is like that because it's it's just it's wonderful and 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 you realize that there's and, and again I'm I'm preaching to the converted in the group but there's just something so special about horses and this yeah. theory just brings that all together whether you've got a wonderful earth horse that's just wants to give and, and and just comfort and or you've got a, a fire element that's you know on the end of a lead rope like a kite all the time because they're not grounded and you just just need some support to help them be more grounded yeah. it covers everything everything and you know because the water horses are prevalent in your group mm -hmm. um i think i want to put out a special call <laughs> Um, because I, I think that we have a special duty to care for the water types who many don't understand. Um, they require different skills of us than, oh, there's a horse, I'm going to ride it and hand it back to the groom and go on with my day. I mean, I doubt that many people that are coming to a group like this are riding like that, but, um, these water horses require a different relationship and they require a different understanding and a, di a whole different set of glasses. And once you see through those set of glasses, that transforms everything you do with animals, even in your life in general. And so I just want to show quickly, this is a thing that I bring up. It's getting a little worn, but um, the other four elements in the center here are a little bit more expectable. Like we have these patterns and we can follow them and it's fine. The water's on the outside. It's like the moat around the castle. It's it's mm -hmm. outside a lot of people's understandings. A lot of people will call you crazy or say it's all in your head or you're making it up or why don't you just smack the horse around and you'll be fine or just start riding the horse and you don't need to stop riding. You know, there's so many like, wrong things that you hear but you know in your heart of hearts that you're right or that something's needs a different way and just understand that my call to the water people or to the, those with water horses is to understand that you need to trust your horse you need to trust yourself 
and you need to trust the relationship between you and put on the freaking earmuffs so that okay. you can listen to that instead of all the naysayers, all the down players, all the people that say you're doing it wrong, all the people that say you should be, you know, you know, riding hard and just going through it or selling the horse or killing the horse. Nonsense. Nonsense. Pursue that special relationship in your special way and receive the special boon that is on the other side. And there's so much more I could say about that. And, it, you know, there's not time or context for that here, but just know that it's out there. And um, I will cheer you on as you go through that exploration. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Um, I'm not sure um, if anybody's got any questions that they'd like yeah. to ask um, just before we wrap up for today's session. Um, if you've got any questions, just pop it into the comment box on the chat section. And um, what I'll do when this goes live um, over the next today or tomorrow, well, I'll add all the links um, to make sure that people can access everything that Susan's got coming up. And also, um, if you've got any questions, you can ask me, you can ask Susan, you can ask on the um, on the group chat. There's some other people as well that have done um, the courses um, with elemental acupressure. So there is a, a few of us that are um, you know, already diving in there and, and doing different things. So um, it comes highly recommended, not just from myself, but other members of the group. So if you've got any questions, go ahead. Um, so coming in. Yes, yeah, so this will be Lisa. I know this because it's Chizzy. And I, I know right, Lisa. Exactly. Is so, <laughs> yeah. so, so let's take a look. So um, Lisa's saying, yes, please. Chizzy's primary element is earth with some water and earth. And would wearing yellow or yellow crystals help bring balance? Because we do have all of these colors that are associated with the five elements. And yes, the earth element is associated with the color of yellow or orange or brown. Um, are there acupressure points on the stomach and spleen meridians? Those are the two energetic pathways that are associated with the earth element. Um, uh, that would be particularly helpful for an earth element horse besides spleen six and stomach two, which she has learned in various programs through us. Struggling with weight and metabolic type issues, Chizzy is only motivated by food, um, but he is too fat. I know it's it's so not fair because the earth element animal loves their food, and yet they are the one that is most vulnerable to being overweight it's just it, i don't know who figured this out but god changed that <laughs> it's, it's not fair um chizzy is uh to so say also what's a good point to let go of worry which is the emotion associated with um the earth for both him and myself thank you um so yes i have definitely uh encountered some good results in um using color therapy around animals. So for example, Amanda makes the whole list of beads. And mm -hmm. if you were to use particular colored stones in your set, it absolutely has been seen to be helpful. Some people will put a little, you know, take a bead and uh, or crystals or whatever and put it in the forelock or the mane or the tail. Um, and these things can help. And um, I've seen that um, some horses respond well, even like having a halter, the color of, you know, whatever it is you want to support. So this is going to nudge things. Um, you know, you also, if, if you have like a terrible lifestyle, just putting a crystal on is not going to, you, you got to do the whole thing. But yeah, it can absolutely positively be part of a many pronged way of helping that animal like doing the acupressure like doing the beads like you know whatever so absolutely you can use the color and as far as the points um i would say uh two points that could be really helpful would be um stomach 40 and stomach 36 and those are two points that bound together with spleen six and i can't type here so um lisa if you 
uh, message me in the guild. I'll make sure you get links to the pictures of where those points are. But um, Stomach 36 and um, um, Stomach 40 are would be really good for, for all of the things that you're talking about. And also for anybody that wants to find these points, you can also actually go to our Facebook page and put in a, a point um, like spleen six, SP six there, and it should bring up the um, post, even if it goes back two or three years, just realize that the way to do it um, in those posts, like would be the, the two letter uh, abbreviation and then a space and then the number is usually how it's going to be written in our posts, is our text. So you just look for it that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, um, uh, and letting go of worry. All of those points would be good for the the worry as well. And you can always do tink points. Remember the tink points. So the, the tink points actually for the earth would be um, the one in the front and the one that's um, one third the way back. So those are actually on the coronary band. So that would be um, spleen one and stomach 44. I'm, yeah. I'm using a shorthand and I apologize for those, <laughs> but I know that it's, um, it's all learnable. Yes, but and if anybody, anybody's yeah. got any questions at all, even if you think, oh, I should know that, trust me, oh, just yeah. ask a question. There will be somebody else thinking exactly the same thing. And for I sure. sometimes struggle with the abbreviations and remembering what number goes where and all those kind of things. So um, don't ever think there's a silly question. Uh, you can always, always ask away. And I've got um, I've got people's name up, names up now on my phone so that we're not calling you Facebook That's user. <laughs> um, so yeah, Julian says that she's got a um, similar, uh, similar horse. Um, so she's lady mentioned earlier, she's got the Frisian. Um, and yeah. I know that Julian's been doing float training and things with with her horse um and she's been trying lots of different things so um i know that she's very interested in all of this stuff and iona in um i think you're in america aren't you so yeah over over your way susan um and she's just saying that yes yeah, so she's found it very interesting and she has a fire horse and likely a metal one and they're both off the track yes yeah. yeah. so I mean, we do these stereotypes about breeds. You can do it with dogs, cats, doesn't matter. Um, there are certain general tendencies in varieties because, for example, a an off to, uh, a thoroughbred has been bred for speed, has been bred for certain performance. So we've selected for the wood qualities and that's why. But within that, you're going to have the full range of the elemental balances for sure. And the other thing that I love is somebody I don't know who said uh, was talking about water wood. And yes, uh, what you will see is the, most horses aren't just going to be one element. They're going to have usually a primary constitutional element that really defines who they are at their core. But they'll usually go through phases when some of the other elements are needing support as well. So um, there's just this kind of flickering kaleidoscope of um, elemental influences that are always changing. This is a you know living organism. Um, and so understanding that these other influences are coming in at different ages, at different seasons, at different um, contexts, like if your lifestyle changes and they get retired or you know something like that, those other elements will come and go yes yeah lots of lots of things can impact it's yeah that's where that's where you can start going down those rabbit holes of okay so yeah and it's just layers and layers and and, and building onto it yeah yeah and um, yes so someone's talking about learning more and you know it goes you can take what i love about the five elements is you can take it just mm -hmm. at its kind of surface level you can still get a lot of information or you can take it you know, study it for 30 years like I do and feel like you're just getting started. It really, you know, whatever your level and whether you're using it um, because you want to become a practitioner, that's, you know, that's one pathway with it. But the other, you can use it really in anything that you do with your horse because it affects the training it affects the everything. So um, it's a pretty broad use in that way. Yeah. 
And just to add that, I know that, again, we've been talking about horses today, but the um, five element theory and, and the things that you do teach are um, you do cover dogs and small animals. And that Absolutely. can be applied to anything, chickens, rabbits, sheep, cows, anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Not- this is just how beings are, you know. Mm-hmm. These, these five patterns are universal. They're just natural influences. So... Um, yeah, they are in all of us. And I think, you know, we come to this because we want to help the horses and we say, oh, I'm only here for the animals. But anytime you start looking at these kinds of things, whether it's, you know, it doesn't matter what of these, you know, energetic healings, you know, healing arts rather that you're that you look into, you end up learning about yourself as well. And um, this is absolutely a fertile ground for learning about yourself. Um yeah sometimes kicking and screaming, but hopefully not too much. <laughs> yes. All. yes. Okay. Um, so yes, thank you so much for your time, Susan. Um, sure. I think we'll leave it there. I don't think there's any other questions. And yeah, and, and Max. Yeah. Um, yeah, water horse. I'd made some, um, a set of beads for Max. Um, oh. so, uh, yeah, beautiful boy. Um, Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so it was lovely talking to you all. Um, so much. And I think next month, just to add, um, I haven't got a guest speaker. I was actually a guest speaker um, last year sometime, so I'm going to be brave and release me being interviewed by somebody else. So um, I will let everybody know in the group when that's coming up. And if you want to have a a look at that, you can do. Um, But yeah, so thank you for joining us all again. And um, we shall leave it there. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone.